And let's see here. Okay. And uh, I believe it is broadcasting live. It's our first time doing this uh, Google Plus Hangout. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I am Shannon, the Shan Man on the, the radio station, 98 KUPD. Today we are talking Breaking Bad, last night's episode, uh, which I don't think last night was uh, as exciting as the previous week's. Um, there I am right there. Sorry about that. I'm also handling multiple duties over here when it comes to uh, the, the Google Plus Hangout, so it's the first time I'm doing this. But uh, as I mentioned before, it was uh, an interesting episode last night, to say the least. And we've got a panel of uh, guests here uh, today to talk uh, about the episode. Uh, over here we have uh, Jimmy from Philly. Uh, Jimmy is going to be uh, talking about his expertise in... Um, uh, chain dogs. Also, Brett Vesley. Uh, he just woke up. Je Brett yeah. just woke up, and uh, he is. He's. I don't know. Are you firing on all pistons, my pal? I, I don't know. I got the. Uh, I got the Coke Zero running over here. I got the sleep in my eyes, so uh, I'm gonna try. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get through this. I swear, next week I will be 100 percent ready to roll. But this right. is, uh, today, I just. Yeah. I know. I just called him. I just called him about uh, five minutes ago, and he was. I was like, Hey, are you ready? He's like, Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Next time I'm doing this from my bedroom, so just yeah, so you know. No, yeah, of course, do it from your bedroom. Uh, now, Brett, you said that uh, you uh, were up late last night watching the episode, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. I tried yeah. to watch it twice. Oh, to get twice. kind of like a... Yeah, I just wanted... I, I, because, you know, Breaking Bad is one of those shows where it's like, am I missing something? And then every time I come in, I come into the station, I'll be talking to Shannon, and I'll be like, he'll be like, oh, did you see this? I'm like, no, damn it! Now I gotta rewind it. I'm like, oh, okay. I saw you picking picking uh, Jesse's pocket and everything. So I yes. tried to watch it twice. So uh, so Brett tries to watch it twice. Now um, I I only got to watch it like maybe one and a half times. I was I was kind of busy doing some other stuff, preparing for something else earlier today. Uh, but um, if people who are happening to stumble upon this uh, hangout uh, on the 98k UPD website, 98k UPD dot com. Um, you can also go to the actual direct event, and as we get further into the uh, the uh, Hangout right here, you can uh, ask questions either on the website or in the Google Plus Hangout. I have an, the application, the Q&A application set up, and uh, people might be stumbling upon this and, and looking at it, so uh, feel free and to ask questions. I'm monitoring them right here. So let's go ahead and get this started, because uh, I do want to cover quite a bit over the course of maybe 30 to 40 minutes, and... Uh, and see what your guys' thoughts are. So last night, uh, we picked up where we left off um, on the previous week where uh, Walter, uh, he was uh, sitting where the same place where uh, Jesse was. He was getting ready to disappear, and this disappearing guy was supposed to come with like his vacuum van and make him disappear. And then we pick up where uh, we think that Walter is actually going to be in the van, but instead it's Saul Goodman. And... Right. It seems as though he's like what? It, it just seems as though he's he's ready to go because it's it's too hot. What do you think about that, Jimmy? Uh, I was surprised about uh, Saul in the van. Of course, it makes sense. He's it's probably pretty hot on him. Uh, right. You know, he doesn't know who's turning over who. So yeah, it made sense for him to get out. What is the vacuum guy? Uh, the the guy from the sergeant guy? Yeah, I think he was in also Jackie Brown too. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was the bail bondsman in Jackie Brown. Yeah. Okay. Max Cherry. Is that his name? <laughs> yes. In the oh, movie. Oh, oh, and Jackie Brown was. I don't know his real name. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. It was. Um. I was a little surprised to see Saul, but it does it does make sense. And uh, Saul get Saul does get get away. I mean, it looks like he's going to be. That could have been his last episode, but I I don't think so. But I now, thought, I thought he, now personally, I thought he may still get killed. But since when they announced the Saul Goodman uh, show they're going to do, they said it was going to be a prequel. So right. I said, well, maybe that's a clue that he doesn't make it all the way through. But if he's away, maybe he, maybe he does. I don't know. It's I don't know. Well, I thought that he was definitely going to. I thought he was going to die. I thought something was going to happen um, significant that led back to Saul because you know Saul. When I thought about it, he knew too much. He knew everything from the beginning. I mean, from the beginning. I mean. Think about it. He started. Uh, he was the one that introduced Walter to Gus Fring, and yeah. that's where it all started. He knew everything that was going on from that point forward, so there wouldn't be a reason why someone wouldn't want to get rid of him. But I don't know at that point who really would have wanted to get wanted to get rid of him. Who do you think, um, Brett? Last night, who do you think would have gone away in your mind prior to watching the episode? Who do you think would have 
been killed off or moved from the uh, the episode. Last night's episode. Yeah. I you know I I thought I thought Jesse was gonna get it. I figured that Jesse was gonna get it. I still think he is, but I thought Jesse was gonna get it yesterday. I did. I just don't see anybody else. I I I figure it's gonna be Walt's gonna go in at the end and have a showdown with uh, with the. Uh, Special needs looking Matt Damon Todd and uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much like it's true. <laughs> it says you're right. <laughs> and then uh, and then the uh, neo Nazi uncles. So I figured that would probably be in the last episode. I thought Jesse was going to get it. By yeah. the way, I was hoping he would, but I don't know. Go by ahead, the way, neo Nazis really getting a bad rep in this. <laughs> I hope it. I hope it doesn't spoil their image. <laughs> I don't know. Who, That's a tough who one knew to they, think about. Who knew they were so mean? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, no, I just, I just thought, I, I just thought that Jesse's time is pretty much expired. I thought he was going to be done, and it was just going to be, you know, the final episode would be a, a, a big, big shootout with the neo Nazis. But I, I, I come away with the episode last night, and I'm still just like. Man, there are a lot of loose ends they got to tie up in 75 minutes. Yeah, it was almost right. like as though when they got into the episode, it was almost as though they um, they opened up more doors to leave more questions unanswered. And I just thought to myself, God, you know, uh, are they going to be able to do this in the very last episode? Uh, but, uh, yeah, it felt as though last night – I don't know, last night, my, my impression of last night's episode – uh, kind of just left me hanging. It was tense, but it wasn't like the previous episode, Ozymandias, where it was just boom, 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 boom. Something happened every time. And uh, you know, after listening to the Breaking Bad uh, podcast this morning, um, uh, Vince Gilligan and all these guys talking about Ozymandias. I mean, there was a lot of things that I think a lot of people missed in that episode that really kind of foreshadowed what was going to happen uh, into this episode. Uh, what were your general thoughts on that, Jimmy? Your, your, what were your first impressions on the episode when you first finished last night? I thought, uh, for the record, I got done watching it an hour ago. But, so it's, so it's <laughs> okay. fresh. It's fresh. Wow. Exactly. But, uh, <laughs> but um, well, we, we've established that Walt has been in that cabin for a couple months, right? Right. I yeah. mean, you know, he's, he's, he really feels isolated. Because he was begging that guy to stay for two hours for ten grand, yeah, you know, and and then when he goes to, I don't want to jump too far ahead, but at the end, it looks like he was just going to turn himself in. Right, that's what and, I kind of thought too. And then when with the gray matter story, he was like, "Forget it." Which, I, I for me, it's always been that thing that sticks in his crawl the most is that these guys are billionaires on his work. And I'm not. Well, I'm a yeah. It. it sticks in his crawl. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy's cutting out there. Oh. Can Jimmy cut me? out. Brett, what do you think? As far as the, the, the whole episode. Oh, wait, you know what? Hang on. Maybe not. I don't know. What, I don't know what just happened. Something just uh, just happened to my audio on, on both of your guys' ends. Oh. So there finish, we go. Jimmy. Go ahead and finish, Jimmy. Oh, what was I saying? Oh, that... <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Like Replay I said, the tape. hang out in office. <laughs> hang out in office. <laughs> he was... Uh, he, he looked like he was going to turn himself in. He saw Grey Matter on TV with Charlie Rose, and he thought, well, forget this. I'm going – I think he's going down in a blaze of glory. I think he's just going to, you know – I think he – is he going to kill the Grey Matter people? That's what I kind of thought. I kind of I kind of. Because got you, that's what you – I mean, this whole time you're thinking he's – because you know how this season, the second half starts, he's getting the, the gun, the big gun. Right. Right? So you think he's going to kill – Jesse, but he probably thinks Jesse's dead at this point because a couple yeah. months have gone by and everything. And um, then you think maybe he's going after the white supremacist, but then he sees Gray Matter on TV, and it, you, is he going to kill them? Now that was an interesting. There's an interesting uh, point that you make because what I found interesting last night when I I, I put a, a I just put a hashtag out on Facebook and it just said hashtag Gray Matter, and then you know people who watched the show had already been like, oh, I know what he's talking about already. Right. And so someone had made the point that they knew they had this theory on wh what was going to happen when Walt left the uh, he left the bar and he, it, it was mainly. I think what was his name? I'm looking for. I think his name was Jason Jenkins, and he said uh, he said something along the lines that he uses the ricin to kill 
Gretchen and the other guy for uh, from Grey Matter, and then uses the M60 to go kill Jack and the rest of the gang. Do you guys, right. you guys think that is a, a, a? Do you think that's a good argument, Brett? It's it's definitely a possibility. It just see, it, it, all of that seems to me to be a lot to wrap up in seventy five minutes. Not mm-hmm. to mention Jesse. Still, I mean, you got you got the neo Nazis and uh, you know the the gray matter people, but you still got what about Jesse? What about Lydia? I that seems it's just that, that's what that's what's so intriguing about this is it's like trying to figure out how they're going to do it all in seventy five minutes. Right, and I don't yeah. know. I mean, do you feel do you feel like there's going to be loose ends that are? Do you feel like it's going to be like your Sopranos, Brett? Do you feel it's it's going to leave on a note where it just fades to black? I I don't think so. I don't I don't think they can do that because I I think for the Sopranos it was it was a great thing to do because nobody's ever done it before and like we've said before, like I've told you before, the Sopranos kind of like it was too easy to let Tony live, but if somebody just gunned him down, it was just that was kind of too easy, so they just kind of left it up to. I think with Breaking Bad, it's already that's already been done. There has to be a definitive ending here, and I believe there's going to be. I just, again, I'm just blown away how they're going to do it in 75 minutes. Because to me, this seems like the third from the last episode. This doesn't seem like this is, the, you know, next to the last episode. Maybe they're preparing for the musical. <laughs> oh God, yeah, the Glee well, version. What well, the Glee version? <laughs> um, I think. Uh, well, I'm glad you brought up Sopranos because one thing. <laughs> Uh, I've been pondering is, uh, and I've put it out on my Facebook or whatever, is Tony Soprano or Walter White? You know, oh, who yeah. do you, you know, it's, it, it, I see a lot of similarities in the character. They're both likable, but they're both terrible people. And if, if Brett is the Sopranos guy, what are yeah. your feelings on the, uh, on, on the differences or the similarities between Soprano and White? Uh, you know, the- I'm biased. I was always I was always a huge Sopranos fan. I mean, I, to me, and this is just me, Breaking Bad is the second best show ever on TV, next to the Sopranos. Because it's an Italian show. Hey, that's probably it. What are you gonna do? But, <laughs> but you know, I I feel more I, I feel worse for for Walt. I mean, because he's you know Tony Soprano on one hand was the mob boss, living life in the big mansion, had tons of money. Hookers, I mean, you you name it, there's Gumans, I guess I should say. But he, he had everything. And Walter White was just some average school teacher coming from nothing who built himself up um, and, and winds up, and, and he's got cancer the entire time. So it, it seems to me there's, you, you feel more for a character like Walter White than you do for Tony Soprano. Well, Why is that? Go ahead, Jimmy. Well, he, he goes back to Walter being the school teacher because we know he's just an average guy, kind of a loser, you know. And he he has the cancer, so he starts the meth dealing, thinking right. I can make some quick money and and help out the family. But the cancer goes into remission, and now he's got the juice, and he just it's spiraling. It's like he beat the kind of beat the cancer, so now what? He can't be stopped. Yeah. Well, and, but now it seems like to me, it, like on yesterday's episode, you, you're you're watching it, and, and like you brought up earlier, Jimmy, you, you you feel you feel bad for him because he offer he offers a, uh, I don't remember the dude's name, Max, the guy from Jackie Brown, he offers him ten G's to sit there and play cards with him for two hours, and he winds up right. only getting an hour for his ten G's. Boy, he got <laughs> raped on that, but uh, <laughs> but but you're feeling bad for him and then all of a sudden he sees the, the Grey Matter documentary or whatever on the news and then all of a sudden the light switch goes and he's like back to Heisenberg. Right. He's back to yeah. that guy that's like you don't feel sorry for her anymore. So it's like he, it was like amazing in that ten minutes he, you you just like just flip the switch. It's uh it's when he got disrespected right on T V. Yeah. Oh, it was just, you know, they were black, he was white, they made gray, but that's yeah. all. He had nothing else to do. It's like when he gets disrespected. Like, remember, he was out in the desert, and he was telling the guy, say my name. Mm-hmm. You know, which yeah. is kind of, it's, a, it's blowhardy to do that, but he did it. And, you know, he felt empowered and respected. And he, I, you know, did he ever really feel respected by his wife or being a school teacher or even getting cancer is kind of a disrespect to you. Yeah. You know, so I think it's just, 
Now, like you said, he's at the bar. He got disrespected again. He's like, forget it. I'm just going to take care of this. And well, you know, one it. thing that I noticed that, you know, uh, from his attitude change, his attitude changed, I believe, after uh, the season when uh, he and Gus Fring, the big Gus Fring blowout, you know. And right. uh, that was when I believe uh, he changed into, like, the Heisenberg. I, we saw him, I believe, uh, start to evolve into Heisenberg whenever um, he was in the bedroom with Jane and Jesse. But then... After uh, after the whole Gus thing, it was like he it was like one of those things. If I can do this, I can accomplish anything, and no one could disrespect me by any means. Well, that's a good point because I think I think that he just I think for his whole you know after the whole gray matter thing went down, he he never was respected. He was just some average schmo with some not that te- being a teacher is a crappy job, but. Compared to being a billionaire, you must know, be a crappy right. job. <laughs> right. I would never know it's a crappy job. All right, well, <laughs> but I mean, you know, having let's let's just say, you know, quote unquote, having a crappy job that pays whatever thirty grand a year, compared to mm-hmm. owning a, a company worth billions, mm-hmm. I think that he never he never had respect. He never felt respected. Nobody ever respected him until he showed up and made all this cash. And I think and he, he also charged. Felt- he felt the same way, I think, uh, with Skyler. Although that that phone call that happened last um, episode with Ozymandias, I think that phone call was done intentionally. That was obviously an intentional phone call. Uh, he knew the cops were there. I mean, why would you call the house anyway, especially right. after a blow like that? But uh, I believe some of his intentions of what he was saying was that um, that was kind of like his way of airing out the laundry with Skyler saying, you know what, even when... Uh, season one had started, she was kind of a bossy bitch, you know? Yeah. And uh, she really didn't show him the respect. He was a timid, shy, high school chemistry teacher. And by the point, by the time we get to the point where um, he is on the phone with Skylar and they had this blowout, um, you know, it was finally his way of saying, look, I'm airing out the laundry. This is what I, b- I believe the entire time our mar- we've had our marriage. You've thought of me as nothing. And uh, you know, this is my way of saying it, but you know what? I don't want you to have to uh, bear you know, any consequences because it's all me. I want the cops to hear what I have to right, say right. and that it was all about me, but still, I want to tell you, you've been a bitch the entire time that we've been married, and I've done everything for this family. Jimmy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm not. No, let's well, just, uh, well, well, thank you well, so much for joining today's <laughs> hangout. <laughs> Walt, 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 Walt definitely always goes back to I do it for the family. Yeah. You know what I mean? And even when Walt Jr. was just cursing him out on the phone. Oh, at the, like at last the, night. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, and that's why he kind of turned himself in. He's like, what do I have? What am I doing this for if the family doesn't even respect me or care for me? Right. You know? Yeah, mm-hmm. last, last week's episode was pretty heavy. Especially when he grabbed the baby and ran out. This was kind of, but how about when Todd capped Jesse's girl? Oh, I can't, yeah, I can't so. remember her name. Yeah, I want to get into yeah, that. Andrea, right? Yeah. I want to get into the Andrea, the Andrea thing here shortly. But I wanted to get you guys' thoughts last night on uh, the Todd, uh, the Todd Jesse dynamic that was going on there. Um, mm. You know, uh, last night when you watched, I don't know if did you guys watch Talking Bad? No, Br- Jimmy didn't because he was just watched no. it right. Now. No, okay. I, I missed it last night. Okay, so I'm going to spoil it for you guys, right? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so Chris Hardwick, he compared it to, or someone on that uh, on the show compared it to Todd wants Jesse to like him, but treats him more like a pet than he does a human. Hmm. Well, he he needs Jesse. Right. He needs he needs Jesse to get the meth to, like he said, he just got it to 96 percent. Right. With Jesse's help, he's not cooking it. <clears throat> So he needs right. to get it. He needs to get it pure. But he also wants to be in Lydia's good graces because he's sweet on her. Yeah, he's trying to get a piece. And right. so, what, so what, what what do you think about that? So he, Todd meets Lydia in the restaurant, and I follow the story sync whenever I watch this because I watch these live when they air. And what they had shown on the story sync was the first time that uh, Mike was with Lydia. Remember, they met in that, uh, in that, uh, that restaurant, and yep. she, she had his back to him, and he had his back to her. And then the next one was with Walt and Lydia, and uh, you know they were face-to-face this time. Like It was almost as though she trusted Walt more than she trusted Mike. Mm-hmm. Um, and then this next one was with Todd, but she made Todd sit back-to-back. What do you think about that, Brett? No, I agree. I think, well, and, and I think that she doesn't really take time. Well, 
up until that point, she didn't really take Todd too seriously because he was showing up with this with this crap meth. He wasn't doing the job, and all of a sudden, you know, she was ready to cut off the the whole uh, the not not relationship business relationship with right. Todd and the the neo Nazis, and all of a sudden he drops down that hey man we got ninety we got ninety six percent now. And all of a sudden, her eyes lit up, and she's kind of like, "Oh, okay." Now it, it seems like she didn't respect him because he he wasn't doing doing the job that everybody else was doing. Now, do you, I think the whole thing behind Lydia is that she's I mean, I, she's a cock tease. I'm telling you right now, uh, she's just doing that for the sake of you know her own benefit. But what's going to happen when she finds out that Todd is like this super crazy? He's he's a whack job. I mean, what happens, Jimmy? Well, I think we're going to find that out in the next episode because I think Todd's going to make his move. Do you think? And, do you think? Uh, yeah. Do you think there's like maybe a, some type of like assault or rape that happens? Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Maybe, maybe, wow. may, I, he might just he might kill her. I I don't see any way she gets through this alive. Yeah. To be honest with you. Yeah. Because uh, she's just kind. She's kind of. She's kind of an irritating character. You know. Yeah. I think like I kind of want to like her, but I don't. It's like she's she's super you know driven but high anxiety and always nervous and you just want to get put her down like a you know like a like a rabid dog almost like I want to get rid of her really. <laughs> Brett, what do you think? I, I, I'm right there. I think she 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 has almost taken she has almost taken the uh, the Skyler route for me where where Skyler was so goddamn annoying. I just wanted them to kill her. Like, right. like kill her last season, all right? Let Walt be single for a while because she now, was just so annoying. So, you know, but Lydia is kind of in that in that realm with me too. Just get get rid of her. I don't care. She my does. question to you, Brett, is: Do you now do you now like Skylar after uh, last night's episode? Do, do you have a little more? Do you have more respect for Skylar now because she's now taking a lot of the brunt? I mean, she was in the DEA's office and she realizes mm-hmm. and knows that she's in trouble. Yeah. No, I I do, and it's but it it seems like. It seems like with Skyler, when you start like feeling sorry for Walt and everything else, you're hating Skyler. But when right. you're start when when Walt turns into that asshole that you know, I mean, the the big crazed drug dealer running his empire, right. that that's when you start feeling better for Skyler. So it's kind of like they're complete opposites to me. Well, let's face it, Walt put her in a pretty bad predicament. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Jimmy's done and the same I, thing though. And I've yeah, his, his I've, my family. He's doing this hangout in the bathroom. My, yeah, I'm hiding. <laughs> my family's at risk all the time just because I'm a jackass. He's got the blue but, stuff cooking in the bathtub right now. <laughs> you know what? I was gonna try to grab some like blue Jolly Ranchers and smash them up and just say hey, but <laughs> you're like this probably that. a little too blue, maybe a little too pure. <laughs> yeah, not pure enough. Um, <laughs> uh, but bubbles. uh. Yeah, but I mean, he's put her in such a horrible position, which once the money started coming in, she kind of got on board a little bit. Right. You know, but she wasn't, I think she was just, you know how Sopranos, Mm -hmm. uh, Carmela was just, she just turned a blind eye all the time because she liked the big house and the jewelry. Yeah. You know, and I think she was kind of like, well, okay, we're going to be okay if I can just, I'll launder the money through the car wash and it'll all be fine. But she didn't know how many people were dying. People were coming by the house. So that's when she started, when she started taking a walk into the pool. (laughs) (laughs) But I, I, you know what? I thought, I thought for sure, I'm surprised Wall Jr. is still alive. I figured he would just get caught in the crossfire. You know what I mean? Like follow his dad somewhere. And, you know, I, I almost thought the same thing. I thought, well, maybe he could die. But to me, I think that would be the more effed up thing to do for that show because the show's already effed up, you know? Right. And to kill off Walt Jr., you know, the disabled uh, right. he's a, the disabled kid a little slower. I mean, that's just like, that's like, oh, my God. I mean, that would have been like, that would have been all over the Internet for the next, like, week and a half if, if Walt right, Jr. Right, right. died. And they're like, oh, my God, Vince Gilligan, you're an asshole. Yeah, that would have been a taboo thing. I mean, killing the special needs kid. Right. I mean, you know, it, it's going to be taboo enough when they kill the special needs kid and Todd. You know, because I mean, that's that guy's <laughs> special that's needs. Matt. That's true. <laughs> yeah, he's special got a weird Matt Damon. He's got a weird uh, forehead going on. He's, it looks like he's kind of smushed. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what? And, and clearly, they're using Jesse. For, to make more meth. 
because right. they would have just killed him when he tried to escape. Spoiler right. alert. You know? And so they cap uh, whatever her name is, his girlfriend, to send a message. And, and by the way, Jesse's not around her to keep her safe. So yeah. it, all went, you know, it all went bad for him anyway. So they're keeping him around for a reason because that would have been the best time to kill him <laughs> when he was trying to get away. Now, uh, now I know what Brett, Brett's answer is to this, but do you think, because we're coming into the last episode altogether, do you think that Jesse lives? Jimmy, go. Yes, and he raises uh, Maria's baby, or Brock. What's his name? Andreas. Andrea. Ra- and he raises the kid, adopts the kid, I think. Okay. That's, a, that's, just, a very, that's, that's good. I just like came that. To, just came to me f- two minutes ago. Okay. Uh, Brett, what do you think? Thank you. <laughs> uh, no, I think he's dead. You think, think he's dead? dead. Yeah. How do you I, think he first, dies? First of all, I want him to die. I'm sick of him. I, you you know, want? He, Je- I, I, I want Jesse to die. I've said. I've told Shannon this a million times. I said, look, the guy was from from season one. He's calling everybody a bitch. Now he <laughs> is the bitch, the crying little bitch. Wow. So I'm. But, but you know, I th- I think that it's going to wind up. He's going to go back into the lab now. With uh, with uh, special needs uh, Matt Damon and the neo Nazis, and <laughs> I think they're gonna do a cook, and I think he's gonna blow the whole place up because he has nothing to live for anymore. Andrea is dead. I mean, maybe yeah, maybe Brock, but I just think he's just gonna end it all. I think he's yeah, done. but I think I mean that's I I see where you're coming from, Brett, but I also kind of see what what Jimmy is saying. You know, like um, kind of like his Achilles heel <laughs> are children. Right. It, it, they've been setting up Jesse this whole season where. He wanted out because Todd killed the kid. He's tired of people getting hurt. Mike was like a father to him, and then Walt killed him. So he wanted out. He just wanted to be done with it, and 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 it's kind of been setting him up. He was giving the money away. It's been setting him up to be almost the good guy, to be the big hero. So I think Jesse might be the only one who lives. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's definitely an interesting point. I just think I think that would be to me. I think it's too happy of an ending. And I just don't yeah. see Breaking Bad Brent ending just that way. Just wants it all to go downhill. That's damn right. Just blow the whole damn thing up. It's done. The happiest man at the radio station wants it all to go downhill. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, I don't. Shannon, what are your what are your predictions? Who do you think makes it makes it out? How do you think you know, it goes down? Uh, I think we've forgotten about Marie, and uh, I think Marie. Uh, I think she sticks it out. I think I she, she gets killed out. too. Oh, you think she gets killed? No, I want her to. I'm done with her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just I like an she... Italian, he wants everybody whacked. <laughs> oh, jeez. It's in my blood, I'm sorry. <laughs> God, go back and watch The Sopranos for crying out loud. Hey, just well, kill hey, everybody. Just, get rid of all these. Well, just, <laughs> he's just kill got, the record, too. God is, he's yeah. got his, uh, Sicil- <laughs> is it say Sicilian? Yeah, I got Sicilian. Yeah, I got, I got Al Pacino on here. <laughs> hey, yeah. let's just, uh, let's just off these up. jagoffs and get off <laughs> and get on with it. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. So no, I think Marie, yeah. Marie sticks it out. Um, I kind of feel bad. I feel actually really bad for Marie. Um, you know, especially after last night. You know, uh, what I found interesting and what they did mention in the podcast today was that. Uh, did you guys notice the it the time span that hit? I, did you notice that she was in the car, but it wasn't as though she was coming from like somewhere. It could have been like maybe she was coming from a funeral. Maybe she was coming from somewhere. Did you notice that? Uh, yeah, because uh, if we're talking that Walter has been away for a while, I mean, all his hair has grown out. Right. You know, that's a couple months worth of growth. And she was, you know, they were saying to her, we're going to find him and all that stuff. But you know something? Wouldn't they have ransacked the house right after they had Jesse? Maybe, but they tortured him, remember? They tortured him for, it may have been yeah. a couple of days. Yeah, yeah. So the the when you go into that timeline, you look at that timeline. It could have been a couple of days. It could have been maybe a day, maybe a two days. I don't know. It's possible. Yeah, they screw with the timeline on that show a little bit. So yeah, yeah. So um, okay. So we're uh, coming up here on the uh, the half hour mark, and I just want to close up and wrap up with a couple of other things, and then we can wrap it up. Um, uh, the very last scene with the music, the actual theme music. Right. Um, and the empty, or it was it was half full bottle, or I'm sorry, not the bottle, the glass of booze. Right. And it was it ended on that note where the the music is playing. What do you think that that all meant, Brett? 
to me, it, it kind of it, it it looks like it, it, to me it's like it's almost like a tribute or a homage to an old western. Like here comes the shootout because yep. it's like yep. the, it's at yep. the bar and you know the, yep. the scotch is there and yeah. So right. I, it's it's gonna be brutal because we all know he's got that big M60 in the trunk of that Cadillac or whatever the hell he's driving. Right, right. So. That's Wouldn't it be true. funny if, like, he got the M60 and it's actually a water gun and, you know... <laughs> yeah, he's got a super soaker. Yeah, he's super soaker. He's like, just kidding, everybody. Here, just arrest me. Thanks, but, uh, still again for four seasons, six seasons of this. Yeah, we waited for soaker. him to get a super soaker out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, for the record, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> you know Probably what, though? That. I do think what will get Walt is the cancer. Like, you think I, don't think, him I, with- I don't think he goes down in gunfire. I think he... Gets through it, probably gets arrested, but then he just dies before he even gets to court or something. So who do you think he gets as far as who do you think he kills? Do you think he kills anyone, Jimmy? Well, the white supremacists have to go because you don't include white supremacists in anything unless you're going to kill them. That's number one. <laughs> okay. uh, all white supremacists. I don't, I don't Jimmy? see how I don't see how <laughs> all members of his family survive, whether it's Baby Holly, Walt Jr., or Skyler somebody's got to go somebody has to make it more painful for walt okay and that you know the the white supremacists have already been to the house interesting and interesting enough in black hoods not white hmm (laughs) interesting (laughs) wow um hey for for the record okay they're not they're not clansmen they're just white supremacists. White supremacists. Okay. It's not that bad. All right. uh, but you know, um, I hope <laughs> it's not that. Bad. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, so, maybe Saul ends up with all the money. I don't That's know. While he works at the Cinnabon. <laughs> the Cinnabon. Yeah. Brett, uh, final <laughs> thoughts. Uh, final thoughts. We'll start with you on last night's episode. What do you What are you expecting? Are you expecting to be let down or uh, completely fulfilled after this uh, final episode coming next week? Um, like I said, like I said from the first, I, I think that it's going to be hard to tie up all these loose ends in 75 minutes, but they've done such a great job for six seasons, whatever. I don't see why they won't. Uh, so I don't think I'm going to be disappointed at all. I, I'm going to be disappointed if uh, Jesse lives. Um, but other than, <laughs> I'm done with him. I told you that. Him and Marie. I'm done with her too. I want oh her out here too. Yeah. She's irritating. Yeah. Who, see? Who gets the ricin? I, I think I agree. I don't remember which one you guys said it, but I, I think I think it's going to be the gray matter people. I think somehow. Gray matter. And I don't know how the hell he's going to get it to him because he's got to kill white supremacist people. He's got to deal with Lydia. He's got to he's got to kill Pinkman. Yeah, he's that's kind of. Kill, I mean, I don't and he know. doesn't. Need, you know what? It's Pinkman. He doesn't even. He probably assumes Pinkman's dead. So whenever he runs into Pinkman, it's going to be a surprise. Yeah. No. Absolutely. So. That's and kind you of know a what? Day. I thought he was going to look in the Albuquerque newspapers and see that Andrea, her obituary. I was oh. surprised. That, yeah. Which I thought that was. St- he still may because remember he had a stack of newspapers like this tall. Yeah. So he still may hit it. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we have, uh, we have a question here from Larry Joe. We all know who Larry Joe is. Oh, hey, Larry. Hey. Thanks, Larry, for asking the question. He did ask the question. It was a repetitive question. He said, repetitive question, who do you think the ricin is for? So, of course, uh, that question is a little delayed, I, so hopefully the answer is Hold on. No, no, I could see it here. That's why it says – that's why I asked it. No, I'm just kidding. I can't see it. But, <laughs> I was like, but, what do you got that I don't? This sucks. What does, what does Larry <laughs> think? Uh, I Larry? don't know. Larry, we would have to, have to ask Larry. This is just, that's just a questioning application, Jimmy. Okay. Well, what, do you, what do you think, Jimmy? Where do you think the race is going? I, can, I always think it's going to be for Lydia because she's always drinking the tea. Well, that's a good point. It's always the tea. And it, I know Walt tried to do it before. He had what well, he had the yeah, opportunity. Yeah, that's a good You know, so, you know, oh, maybe okay. maybe he tries to slip it to uh, Lydia and Todd drinks it again all creepy-like. <laughs> Special needs Matt Damon gives it a little. <laughs> Man, I, who knows? It's just, I just hope it's, I just hope it's 75 minutes just packed full. Yeah. I hope so, it's too. Gotta be. I, I don't know how they can wrap this thing in 75 Here's minutes. what I want to know. What the, what the hell are we going to watch when this is over? Oh, I, yeah, I know. Right? Reruns. Uh, Sleepy Reruns. Hollow? You know one thing before we go, before I, I – Sleepy Hollow, I know that <laughs> one. Uh, you know one thing that I didn't notice uh, in Ozymandias? I don't know if you guys noticed, but um, whenever uh, Dean Norris, whenever Hank 
points the gun at at uh, Walt, okay, and he says, "Drop the gun." Do you guys ever remember anyone picking up the gun that Walt was holding? Anyone? Anyone? Uh, no. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. There's a loose end right there, part of a loose end that that uh, I think could be. I don't know. It could make. It's a very slim chance, but it could play into this next week's episode. It could play. I don't know. If Everyone went speechless. They don't know what to say. That was like the I, hardest question ever. I know. Thanks a lot, pal. Uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't. Like I said, that's another loose end that they got to try to. They got to try to drop down to seventy-five minutes. I, here's a here's a loose end. I'll throw it at the end because I thought it before we went live. What Beneke? Does Beneke make an appearance? Is his neck better? What's I know he makes appearances in Charles Schwab uh, commercials. <laughs> does he? <laughs> he does. I swear to God. <laughs> well, I just want to know. I mean, does he? Is he going to factor in at all, or is he done? I think he's done. I think he's done. Uh, he's not getting the pipe from Scott. Skyler's not getting the pipe from him anymore, so I think he's done. So, uh, one more question by... Hold on, uh, wait a minute. Skyler oh gives him God. the pipe? <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> she's I wouldn't she's actually... Me. Yeah, I wouldn't that's me if she just whipped one out, you know? <laughs> she's that bitchy, yeah. yeah so she's that controlling. Another- Another question by Larry Joe um, on the on this question and answer app. And he says, "Did you guys notice Todd taking on Walt's characteristics, Brett?" Mm. I didn't uh, because, to, but it, it's definitely a good point. I didn't because I to me Todd is just Todd is just such a psycho and just creepy and just weird and Walt for the most part was always yeah he was kind of a psycho but he was uh, to me he was just always he had it together Todd just seems like he'll just yeah. he just flies by the seat of his pants uh, Walt Brett, stuff was always meticulous yeah Brett's right Walt does things for a purpose Todd does things just to get he's late just, or <laughs> he's just a nutty yeah he's, he's totally totally sociopathic right. totally mm-hmm. so Okay. Yeah, I haven't. But I mean, like the way maybe he's referring to the way he was talking to Jesse. <clears throat> I here's don't know. Some I- here's some ice cream, Jesse. I think I think <laughs> rub the Larry- lotion on yourself. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it, you know, maybe next time we get Larry in and he talks about it. But you know, I think uh, if I were to analyze Larry's question, you know, I think because Todd Todd does idolize. Walter so much that you know he's trying you know he he wants to be this man of power but he doesn't know exactly he doesn't have the brain smarts I mean he taught him how to cook meth he taught him how to cook dirty water meth not but, water, yeah not well enough apparently yeah but he wants to take on some of these characteristics as though like he has some power and maybe you know in facial expressions so he could be nice one minute but then he could turn into an evil scumbag the next you know so I think that's maybe. Uh, where Larry might see he might see some of those characteristics um, in Todd. So, uh, good question there, Larry. So, um, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, what, do you, what do you guys think uh, for the first time uh, doing our Google Plus Hangout? I mean, pretty good. I, I thought. I mean, I'm over here handling multiple things. It's like stressful over here. I believe at the beginning uh, of uh, of the show, you said you were handling many duties. Yes. Which I thought was funny. I'm not in the bathroom though. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I got some duty right over here. So you know, and, what, <laughs> and you know what's going to happen? I, I think what we need to do is we're going to have to name this. Uh, we're going to have to name this uh, this hangout somehow. Eventually. Nah. What? You, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure, yes. Everything should be named. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> everything should. We'll figure it out. But next week we're going to return once again. 3.30 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, and uh, we will go ahead and uh, talk the final episode of Breaking Bad. Um, if you guys want to follow us, of course, there's my Twitter handle right there, at uh, Shan J. Hernandez. Uh, Jimmy from Philly, right there is his Twitter handle, and I think uh, Brett Vesley, that's yours, isn't it? My, my computer over here is running a little yeah, slow. Yeah, yeah, it's there. So, and of course, you can also find us at 98kupd.com. Uh, I'm on from 7 until midnight. Uh, weeknights, Brett is on right after me, and then Jimmy. Jimmy, he does... Um, you can no. catch me like four hours on a Saturday <laughs> if you're lucky, if you're not tubing or in a boat. Yeah, while well, you're laying around the pool, that's him. Yeah, that's... <laughs> that's the way it works around here. We, Jimmy, and of course, Jimmy's on a bounce house half the time. <laughs> Just thanks for including me. 
<laughs> I appreciate it. So that's going to wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for joining in this Google Plus Hangout. Um, we will go ahead and post this to the 98K UPD website. And feel free to leave us questions, comments. Uh, and uh, if you are interested in uh, joining the Hangout next week, maybe we'll get one of you guys in and you can talk the final episode. And then after that, what are we going to talk about? Maybe music? We'll talk music. Music. Oh, wait. We're, air. we're back on air. We're on air again. Now we're on air. Sorry about that. Had what? You need Clayton down there or what? What's going on? <laughs> hey, guys. Where's our engineer? Bring you know what? <laughs> the Clayton hangout will be awesome. Oh, Let's get him in it. That will be we the could do a Clayton yeah. hangout. That would be great. Yeah. Hey, be guys. Great. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you guys, I will talk to you uh, here in a little bit. But uh, thank you, everyone who did watch, maybe all four of you. But uh, we're hoping to do this every week. So we'll talk to you guys uh, very soon. See you later.